Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And my name is Robin Wong. And you are also a photographer. Oh yes, right? <laughs> based in Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in this video we're going to share some camera settings. Um, the default settings um, in every camera when you take it out of the box, they are what they are and probably not what you want. And this, in this video we're going to share, Robin and I, we're going to share the settings that we changed before we take the first picture. So please, uh, what is the first setting that you changed before you take uh, the first picture on your new camera? The first setting, I always, always turn off the autofocus beep. I find it so <laughs> annoying. Same here, it's super, super annoying to hear the beep every time. Yes. But you know, it's not annoying for everyone. I have a friend back in Finland oh, yeah? and he likes to have the beep on, on his Nikon okay, camera. So okay. maybe some people prefer it on, but I turn it off. And since we're talking about uh, audio signals, I also turn off all audio signals, whatever the menu sounds and everything, because they are distracting too. <laughs> How about the shutter? Do you use silent shutter, Matti? Only if I need uh, shutter speed uh, beyond mechanical shutter, mm. then I use electronic shutter. Mm. But I don't, I very seldom use uh, silencer. I find it really distracting if I don't know exactly when the camera oh. took the picture, I want to hear the, the shutter. That shutter yes. sound. There's that satisfaction yes. in the clicking of exactly. the shutter. Yep. Yeah, the reason I ask about silent shutter is because a lot of people question me yeah, in my YouTube comments or even emails asking, hey Robin, why don't you use silent shutter? Mm. It is like some of the, the <laughs> thing is the best uh, shutter modes. So this leads me to the next setting that I actually changed in my camera once I got it. I actually changed it to electronic first curtain. Ah. So for Olympus cameras, the words that they use is anti-shock. They'll set it mm. to zero seconds. It basically means that when the shutter opens, it's actually electronic and it closes with a mechanical yeah. shutter. And the reason I do that, uh, there's a very important reason, <laughs> is to prevent shutter shock. So whenever there is a mechanical movement on the shutter, it induces some very small vibration and that vibration can cause the image to be a little bit soft and it can be really annoying. And we cannot predict what shutter speeds, which lens you use, how or when it will happen. It just happens so randomly that it's very hard to prevent. And the only way to get rid of that is to either use electronic shutter, full electronic shutter, or electronic first curtain. And I, like Matty, uh, <laughs> would prefer to hear the sound after I click the shutter button, hence the electronic first curtain shutter. You know what, I also use electronic first curtain shutter, but my reason is uh, to prolong the shutter life. The shutter makes less cycles yes, with yes, the first yes, electronic yes, yes. first curtain. And uh, one of the problems we are talking, we were talking about the silent shutter. Yes. One of the problems can be rolling shutter. Mm. So if you're shooting action, at least you should test the camera, your camera's yes. electronic shutter. If you get the funny warped uh, yes, pictures, yes, then yes. it's the, the rolling shutter and um, it may not be suitable for action photos. That's why I always tell people that don't use silent shutter on default because current technology, the silent shutter still introduces a lot of limitations yes. and you'll run into some problems. You can use the mechanical shutter, first curtain ele uh, electronic shutter, and if you need it in some situations, I also came across in some situations where I need complete silence, say golf course mm. or a music recording yeah. studio. You don't want any sound at all. Then I use the silent shutter. But like Matty said, uh, for sports, no, no. <laughs> Another setting that I would immediately change when I get a new camera or if I use uh, the camera out of a new box would be turn the instant review off. I think this is very important for me because when I'm looking through the viewfinder or if I'm composing my shot, I want my eyes to be on the scene, on my subject. I find that the instant review takes me away from that and that distraction can cause me to miss important moments. So when I'm waiting for something to happen, mm -hmm. after I take a shot, if the review pops up, it blocks my view and it, it just somehow, it, it, it's, it's disruptive. So I just turn off completely and when the time comes, I will review the image if I need to review. And also like these days we are using mirrorless cameras and we 
we have what you see is what you get. So you're actually seeing the final results shown on your screen before you press the shutter button. If the image is underexposed, you can compensate immediately. If the image, the color is wrong in white balance, you can change it. it it's as good to down to like, if you want to check focus, there's focus picking or other tools to help you to get the final image right on the spot before you click the shutter button. So for me, instant review is not necessary. I think the church bell agrees. If you can hear that recorded. <laughs> yeah, the bell agrees and I agree too. I also turn off the instant uh, review or whatever you call it, because it is super, super distracting. And uh, the same reason, um, also, I can miss a shot if I start uh, uh, like examining mm. my previous exposure in the middle of something and there's another picture happening right in front of me. So mm. always turn on off the, the instant uh, review. Re yes. yes. And another thing that I always changed is the file format from JPEG to RAW. And that is because when I started using digital cameras back in 1999, there were no proper RAW tools. They were very rudimentary. And also the JPEG options in camera and all in all the image quality mm. was not what we have today. And uh, as soon as proper RAW tools were available, I started using RAW because it was just so much better and it offers so much. I don't see any benefits in JPEG really, unless you are in a, a big hurry you need to deliver right away. That's right, Matty. I also will change the camera to RAW. I don't know why that a lot of cameras are by default set to JPEG only. Yeah. So <laughs> most funny. of the time I shoot RAW, I will always, always shoot RAW, but uh, there are times I set the camera to RAW plus JPEG. And that's because I do a lot of event coverage mm. and the company will need, my clients will need the photographs immediately for press release. So after the event, I don't have time to sit down, transfer the photos, edit my photos one by one before I submit photographs I need to deliver my photographs as fast as I can so JPEG is the only way to go but I will still keep the raw copy and most of the time I will also shoot raw for my own personal projects so yes Mati change the camera setting to raw or in some cases raw plus JPEG <laughs> I always always turn off the autofocus assist light the very annoying red beaming light when you're in low light uh, I find it very distracting when you're shooting in a dim environment and the light just cuts across and everyone is just annoyed by that red uh, laser shooting out from the camera <laughs> and I feel that uh, the, the assist light helps long time ago when the cameras don't have very good autofocus yeah. and it needs that light to feed back to the autofocus system to work more effectively in low light but these days any cameras that's released in the past five years they are so efficient and the autofocus in low light has improved so much yeah. that I see no reason to use the autofocus assist light anymore it's just mm. a mere annoyance so that's also one of the things that I always turn off when I got a new camera we seem to agree on every setting I also turn <laughs> off the AF uh, autofocus light it is so super annoying and you are right uh, all new cameras they can focus almost in mm. pitch black conditions without uh, AF light and uh, it's so super distracting. The next setting I always change is the viewfinder view. I take away all unnecessary info uh, on the viewfinder or on the screen because it's super distracting if there are all kinds of things uh, blinking or glowing or uh, doing whatever they are doing. I just want to see the, uh, the picture that I'm going to take and my exposure values and nothing else. As for me, uh, I must have my eyes on like what Mati said, the exposure values, shutter speed, ISO, aperture, that must be on the screen. Uh, and one more important thing that I need is the uh, leveling. Ah, so just yes. to make sure the image <laughs> is straight. I, I have a problem of always making my photographs <laughs> too slanted. I don't know why, maybe like internally I'm not balanced or something. So I need that, uh, the leveling guide to help me level my shots or, or else everything is not level. <laughs> I, I forgot to mention that I also need that. I don't know what it is, but if I don't have the level gauge, just... then my, my pictures are all, all over the place and the horizon is tilted. Yes, yes, so yes, I, yes. That too, but everything else I want off. I just yes. want to basically see the clean screen and uh, Agree. Uh, whatever my composition is. That's more important than some unnecessary info on Correct. the screen. Some cameras don't have 
direct ISO button. Mm -hmm. So I would assign an ISO shortcut to one of the customizable function buttons. And this is true for some older Olympus cameras. You need to assign that specific button so they can access the ISO control directly. That's what I do for most cameras because I need quick access to my ISO setting. I actually adjust my ISO manually for all my shots. Oh, <laughs> I use auto ISO most of the time. Uh, but if I was doing, still doing professional assignments or uh, paid jobs, then I would do uh, use manual exposure mm. probably in most cases. But in my case, I mostly use auto ISO, but I still want to access my ISO easily. So I mm. actually do the same thing. I program some of one of the buttons for that. Or if my camera have, uh, has uh, like three dials, I one is for aperture, one yes. for shutter speed and one for ISO. And that's, uh, in my opinion, the perfect solution. There's one more setting I always customize and it's the My Menu because I want to have uh, certain menu items uh, readily accessible and uh, My Menu is the way to do it because many cameras have a little bit convoluted menu, oh, yes. <laughs> menu system. <laughs> so, but My Menu is a good way to have uh, whatever you want to have uh, like uh, first uh, in the menu. I think that uh, all cameras should have my menu and it's a problem where only some newer Olympus cameras or not just Olympus only some cameras from certain brands they have this fully customizable my menu for me it's very important uh, there are some settings that I like to have but maybe Mati doesn't use it or there are certain settings that Mati yeah. would like to have in a quick menu that other people don't need it so it's the perfect way to customize the camera to exactly how you want to use it and it's just too bad I think every single camera should have it. So I think we pretty much covered all the most important settings that oh, we yes. changed. But I have a question for you. What about, um, have you changed any of your habits or your customization settings over the years since you started a long mm. time ago and today are your, some of the <laughs> settings, are they the, still, still the same? I think uh, to answer that question, I have to tell you a little bit about where I started and where I am now. <laughs> I started using DSLR uh, yes, in the digital like, age. Like we all did. <laughs> no, but Matthew started from film. Oh uh, yeah, yeah of course. So of course you have a lot more extensive <laughs> knowledge and experience than me. But I started from DSLR and of course, uh, during the DSLR times, I would need the review mm. just to make sure that uh, quickly I can see that my exposure yes. is correct, my focus, everything is right. These days, I don't need the review anymore. I think that's the biggest change. So what you see is what you get. All the other settings that I changed are still the same last time and now. The autofocus assist light, I still turn it off. The autofocus beep, I still turn it off. The RAW plus JPEG setting, they're still consistent. Mm. I don't think everything else changed that much because I'm relatively a young and new <laughs> photographer so maybe somehow I don't know in the future maybe I'll have more changes you know I also have pretty much the, still the same settings as I had uh, since I started mm. using digital cameras but I've been going back and forth between back button focus uh. and shutter button focus but now especially with my with the Sony cameras the the focus system is so uh, good and advanced that I have pretty much uh, rejected the back button yeah, focus, focus system. It's not needed anymore. But especially with DSLRs, they were more unreliable sometimes. The focus was a little bit uh, oh, back yes, focus or front yes, focus. Yes. Then when you nailed the focus, it was so easy just to first use the back button and then use the shutter and yes. the focus would not drift while you were taking several pictures, like say portraits or something like that. But I pretty much also have the same, still the same settings, settings. basic settings as I had uh, since I started using digital cameras way back in 1999. Yeah, as what Mati said, the autofocus has improved so much. And if you still miss your shots, don't blame the camera. It's your <laughs> fault. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think this pretty much covers it. Or do you still have something? No, that's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> everything? Okay. Yes, everything. <laughs> uh, guys, please do leave your settings that you changed when you get a new camera in the comments down below. And we are heading out for a overpriced cup of coffee Ooh, yes. now with Robin. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. And please also check out Robin's channel. And uh, please consider buying us a cup of coffee. Links down below. And um, 
what else? Uh, nothing, I guess. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>